What's up, everybody? This is Kyle and Brent of the Arcade Hack with our first edition of Nerd News. So we're going to talk about comics, superheroes, video games, pretty much anything nerd-related So throughout the week. And uh, yeah, so here we, we'll get our first edition started off. Um, Brent, I don't know if you've seen the article. It was on Reddit, and I found it on Facebook. I posted it on my Facebook. I know you don't partake in the Facebook, but there's, a, there's an article, and it's called... Uh, guy on shrooms texts his girlfriend his existen- at San Diego Comic Con texts his girlfriend his existential crisis. <laughs> okay, what? So this guy is at Comic Con at San Diego Comic Con and he's on shrooms and he's just texting his girlfriend about like what's going on. <laughs> and like some of it's like he tries to be so deep, but like some of the shit he says is so ridiculous. Like there's one where <laughs> he's like. He's like, do you know the San Diego Comic-Con is allowed to happen every year? Every year! And the UN does nothing to stop it. <laughs> and like, this guy sounds great. It's fucking hilarious. So there's another part where he's like... <laughs> he's just like, what's called? Um, what the fuck? Is, what, I'm trying to remember. Oh yeah, he's like, so someone just contacted security. He's like, to be honest, I'm surprised more people aren't trying to contact security. He's like, no one's truly secure. <laughs> and I was like, wow. Way to go! Way to go there, this Socrates. Is deep stuff. Yeah, and he's like the one part. He's just like everyone's standing and like dying in this line just to get a, to see someone's famous fucking face and try to get a stupid T-shirt that has a happy poop on it. He's like, <laughs> he's like, you know what? Fuck Palestine, man. He's like they're over there fighting and dying for an invisible person. He's like these kids can show you what they fucking die for. A stupid <laughs> happy poop T-shirt. And it's just like, it's just like he goes on this huge rant and then. The one part he says, he's like, this is how I know God doesn't exist. He's like, if God willed us all into existence, he's like, the sky would be this many colors all the time. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, that was, that was pretty entertaining, I I found, but. Oh, wow. uh, In other news, uh, there's the leaked footage of uh, the uh, test footage for Deadpool, which looks fucking awesome. I know I was showing you earlier, but. Yeah, I saw it. That was pretty legit. Yeah, you know what? I have to say, Guardians of the Galaxy to me, it was, like, the biggest, like, it wasn't the biggest upset of the year, but to me, I was like, why are they getting their movie? Like, why are they getting one? Because they were never, like, they were kind of big in the comics and stuff, and they had their own, like, little series and shit, but they were never, like, well, they were never an Iron Man or anything, right? Like, they were never anything huge. But, and I was, like, I was all excited because they're, like, they're making an Ant-Man movie, and I was like, he's crucial to the storyline of the next Avengers film, which is the Age of Ultron, because he's, like, the creator of fucking Ultron, right? And that movie is tanking right now because they have they've lost a couple directors so far. They had a they had talks of losing the cast the other day, which would be fucking shitty. And then Guardians Jeez. of the Galaxy is looking to be the best movie that they make this year, actually. But so yeah, it's kind of crazy how that kind of flipped around. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm, uh, it was actually pretty pretty interesting. I I really want to see it. I haven't seen it yet, so I gotta I gotta wait. But um. I'm trying to think what else is coming out, coming out, uh, coming out lately, like for movies. I know they have a bunch of like proposed. Okay, wait, wait. Did you see the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie? No, I have not seen it. The trailers want... scare me. I want to see it. Ugh. I just see like when they did the slow mo shots of like him. I think it's like Michelangelo. He's getting like pushed into a car. And it's all slow mo. I'm like, I just like it's like they literally took a scene from Transformers and just took out the robot and put in a turtle. Yeah, no, for sure. But I still want to see it just because it's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. See, I don't know. They keep ruining it. That's the thing, is that originally, like, they made them look different. They didn't give them, like, the noses, so they have this, like, weird, like, flat face thing going on, which is kind of weird. <laughs> and they're the Teenage teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And the, the whole thought behind this movie is apparently they're not teenagers anymore, which doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of in the title. Uh, yeah. So, but I don't know, it's, it, I'll get, I'll still see it, because, like, I want to give it a chance, obviously, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I hope it's good, but it wouldn't surprise me if it sucks. Yeah, I, yeah, me too, I'd, I'd be, I'd be like, okay, I would just assume, I'd be like, alright, I was, I was right all along. <laughs> yeah. Um, I actually have to watch tonight, they have, a. I downloaded it, the, um, they have a new Batman animated series called Assault on Arkham, and it looks really fucking awesome, actually. I was looking at some footage of it, and it honestly looks like, you know, like, they have, like, the Arkham Asylum games, like, the Batman ones? Apparently, like, the, like, from what I was looking at, it looks like the footage of, like, the fights and stuff, and how it's, is, like, how the, I guess, fight sequences in the show plays out, it's very much like those games, where they have, like, this third-person kind of view, and you're, like, you're kind of with him when he's fighting and stuff, and, like, it looks pretty awesome, actually, so... 
be checking that out today, actually. Those um, Batman games are legit, too. I have Arkham Origins, and, like, I bought it <laughs> and, like, paid full price. So I paid, like, 60 bucks for it, and I fl- barely played it. I gotta start playing it again. Um, it, se- it seems really good. It's just, I don't know, I, I think I would need to play it with a controller. Like, I find on a, co- on a computer, like, on PC, it's so hard, because the controls... There's a bunch of controls, and they're all over the place. Like, there's, like, two buttons here, and then, like, three buttons on the other side of the keyboard, and, like, it's just all spread out weird. Yeah, I can see that. So I think a controller would be easier, but... Um, I also have to watch a... They have an animated Marvel film, and it's a... I think it's like Avengers Confidential or something like that, and it's like Black Widow and Punisher. So, oh, that'd be badass. Yeah, it's an animated one. I, the animated ones are actually striking, like, been pretty good. Like, I got uh, Iron Man and Hulk, and that one was actually pretty sweet. Like, it's... And it's not even, like, it's a small thing. Like, it was... I think it cost me like it was ten bucks or something like that, and it was like a two. I think it was like an hour and a half, hour and a half movie, and like it actually had a really good story to it too. But and uh, I'm trying to think what else I've been watching. I watched um, Astonishing X Men, the Marvel Knights version. It's really weird animation because it's like they take. It's like almost like they took the like the prince from the comic, right? And like kind of like animated that. So it's like weird. Not I don't know. It's really hard to explain how the animation is. But uh, it's really good. Uh, I watched the it's the Astonishing X Men takes place with a uh, takes place with uh, Cyclops, uh, Emma Frost, Wolverine, Kitty Pride, and I forget who else. Oh, and Beast. And it's like Professor X isn't running the X Men at this point, and uh, it seems pretty cool. But I don't know. I like I. It's only six episodes. It's pretty pretty well done. Yeah. But and they have like a, they have that one. They have an Iron Man one. They have a Spider Woman one. And a Black, uh, Black Panther one. They're actually all really, really well done. If uh, you guys ever have a chance to check them out, uh, I really, highly recommend it. Um, in terms of comics, I actually was just reading the Death in the Death of the Family. Uh, it's a Batman graphic novel. Uh, with the with the Joker, he comes back after kind of being gone from Gotham for a while. And the last time he was in Gotham, he had his he cut his face off and left it for Batman. So in this one. He's actually, um, it's cool because like the cover, I have it posted on our on our Facebook page. He has, um, he basically has his face and he put it back over and he kind of like took almost like bungee cords and kind of like a- reattached it just like hanging over his face. So he looks really fucked up and like the story is honestly fucking awesome. Like it's just such a great and well done story. There's so many twists and turns. I was, uh, when I bought it, because I got it, I think at, uh, chapters and it was like all hardcovers were like 30 percent off and i yeah. got it and i was like oh my god i was so fucking stoked yeah, but, that's awesome. but there's more to it like i only have the first graphic novel so like i want to read more because it was just fucking fantastic so um so how's how's uh hearthstone been going brent you can update us on all the hearthstone news and that's the, pretty exciting uh, fucking curse and extra amos finally came out but they're only doing one wing at a time but it's been the only complaint I have is it's pretty short, but it's still a really good experience and it's pretty fun. The heroic fights are really fun. I've only done the first two quarters so far. Yeah. And it's well, the like all well, I don't know, have you played much Hearthstone? a little bit. I played You know how like everyone has the hero power and all that sort of stuff? Yeah. All their all the uh like bosses have their own little hero powers that do cool stuff like K. I guess you've played well. Okay, so like I did the play quarter. Yeah. And uh, then my phone started ringing. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And okay, you know like uh, Helgen the Unclean? Yeah. His hero power is called explosion or eruption or whatever it is. It's like the same thing in uh, Nax. And it does damage to the leftmost minion. Oh, okay. So That's it's kind of like funny. you have to position your dudes right so you don't die. And then like... That's kind of cool. Yeah. Then, like, I'm trying to think. There's a few of them. I like how I'm drawing a blank on this now. I just played it like that. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Seeing, just seeing, like, the little advertisement that's, like, you know, like, the Curse of Naxxramas, Na- it's actually made me kind of want to try playing. Just because, like, I play Magic, like, my complaint with Hearthstone is, is that I, like, I grew up playing Magic the Gathering, like, the actual card game, right? Yeah. And then as time went, like, I've been collecting, me and my cousins and stuff have been collecting since I was, like, seven. So, um, I don't know, I, to me, like, I've played the computer game, and I just, I find, I find the Magic the Gathering one superior to, to Hearthstone, 
just because, like, again, it's something I'm familiar with. I find the systems better. Like, I enjoy how... Because I find Hearthstone's almost too cheap where you can just, like, attack the guy unless they have, like, a defender. You can just attack, like, right at them. Whereas, like, yeah, in Magic... Yeah, that's not necessarily a good idea, though. It isn't. Yeah, like, there is still strategy. And I just like Magic where it's, like, it's so much more unpredictable because you atta- you set your attackers and then they declare the blockers. So sometimes they may just, like, take the hits and you're like, whoa, what's going on? Or they may, like, play, like, a spell and you're like, holy shit. That's changed the game, kind of thing. So, I don't it's, know. I feel like it still does that in Hearthstone if you play it enough. But yeah, you barely yeah, play. yeah. Like I, I don't know. I definitely see the potential for it to be like that. And like from what I've heard, a lot of reviews from like you and Jason playing and the other people I know who've played, I get that a lot. I just, I don't know myself. I, I would just much ra- like when I see it, I'm just like, it's kind of like when you try to play another MMO after playing WoW for so long, right? Yeah. Every every time you see, it, you're like, oh wow, this is kind of just like this, and you're like, oh well, I could just be playing that instead. Yeah. <laughs> like so I'm just kinda like, oh well, you know, this is just like magic, I could be just playing magic instead right now. Yeah. But No, I can understand that. Yeah, so but I don't know. I uh, besides that I, I don't know. I think it's it's something I'm probably gonna try soon. Because like I said, even pet battles in WoW I've been kinda trying yeah. to I don't know. I'd say like it's pretty solid. It's a good experience. I like the there's some cool class challenges too. Like there's this one for the hunter that just came out with the last thing. Yeah. Where you get, okay, so this pet, you know how it works, right? Like the yeah. stats and all that stuff? Kind of, Okay, yeah. so your entire deck is these 1-1 one, one spiders. They cost one mana, they have one attack, one health, but when they die, they get, you put a random beast into your hand. That's sweet. So you might get something that's terrible, or you might get something that's, like, amazing. That's it's such a, it was such a weird deck to play. It was pretty fun, though. That's actually pretty awesome. See, like, that's what I like. I love the strategy behind, like, those, like, card-type games, like, because they're just, again, like, I I know I've played, like, even when my, me and my cousins were playing Magic the other the other week, we had, we were playing, like, a three-player game, like, with actual cards, not, like, a computer game. Yeah. And we played this game, and, like, I was like, okay, I'm gonna turn this game around and fucking just throw down. I threw everything I had. I almost killed my one cousin. And then, like, my other cousin played this one card, and then I played a spell, and then my other cousin played a spell, and it completely changed the game. Like, it was just, like, everything seemed so certain, and in a matter of seconds, like, the game was completely changed. Yeah, that's what, I love that about card games, how, yeah, they just swap like that sometimes. Yeah, so. Or, like, yeah, like, actually, yeah, like, going back to Hearthstone, the other day I was playing, and I was playing, like, an aggro deck, Mm -hmm. and, uh. So I'm, about, I'm just, like, beating the hell out of this guy, and I've got him down to, like, 10 health. I'm like, all right, yeah, he's dead next turn. And then, yeah, they just play, like, two cards. I was playing against a paladin. You play this card called Equality that sets all your health to one on all your dudes. And then you play Consecrate, which does two damage to everyone on the enemy side of the board. That's fucking sweet. And just fucking blew up everything. And I was like, son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. But it's, like, so funny when stuff like that happens. Yeah, see, that's, like, that's what I like about... um. Oh man, my computer's lagging so bad. Um, that's what I like about having uh, like Magic. There's this one variant called Planes Chase that you yeah. can play, and it has these big cards. And essentially, they have they'll have a rule, and then there's like you can because you always roll. You can roll this die, right? And like there's a bunch of blank sides, which means does nothing. There's a chaos symbol, and then there's like this other Magic symbol that basically changes what plane you're on. So if you get like, for instance, there'll be like one where it's like Oh, only uh, what's it called? Only one creature can attack per turn. It's like per turn, and then it's like if you roll a chaos, then you can attack with as many creatures as you want, but your opponent can only block with one creature. And yeah, yeah and it's like they just change like that, and like that in itself, like you could be you could be on top and it'd be exploiting one plane, and then like someone rolls and like changes it, and it completely changes the game. <laughs> like it's just it's fucking crazy, but. Yeah, there's like one where it's like you get uh, basically like every time you cast one mana, you get an extra mana added to your mana pool. So it's just like you have basically double mana. But it's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, so I'm trying to think of what else I've been I've been watching or reading lately. I'm reading the Scott Pilgrim uh, manga. It's actually really fucking awesome. So, I can see that. I only yeah. I watched the movie. I really liked the movie. Yeah, like this one's really cool. Like the first one I found, like I'm only on the second one right now. The first one I found followed the movie pretty much directly. But the second one is cool because it focuses on like because in the movie, they mentioned they're like yeah me and like Scott's like yeah me and Kim used to date you know it's totally fine now things aren't weird at all, 
but like this one here it focuses and it shows their relationship like Kim and Scott like way before all this happened okay yeah. so like it actually tells the story of like what they like did and everything else which is kind of cool yeah because in the movie there's just like a small point yeah it just exactly it's just like they just say oh yeah we dated and then there's like the weird evil glare and then that's it they never talk about it after that yeah and it's like oh cool <laughs> so they're like but yeah so it's it's really well done i'm really enjoying it right now i actually have to read I've been reading the... I read some of the World of Warcraft graphic novels, and they're really well done. I have a couple other ones, but I made a promise to myself that I bought them. And as motivation to myself and as a gift to myself, I am not allowed to read them until I'm done school. That's That's been my... That's my, my little theory behind that, is I figure if I do that, it'll motivate me to finish, and I won't get sidetracked as much and everything yeah, that's else. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Yeah. I mean, yeah, if I figure, you know, it'll... It'll get the, uh, what's called, get everything kind of, you know, situated. I'm just going to close all this shit down. Because, yeah, my shit's just fucking... Going crazy. Yeah, it's lagging really bad. I just don't know what's doing it, because, like, I have Skype and, like, everything else open, but, yeah. Well, Fraps is, like, slowing shit down. It doesn't it's Fraps do a number on your computer, usually? Yeah, it's, like, running, like, a couple FPS right now. But, right, what uh, else is new? Um, not much actually. I haven't really been playing a lot of games lately. Like I've been, I basically been playing WoW. A lot of people are coming back. I mean, I heard, uh, from what I heard with um, WildStar, a lot of people played to the end, and they were kind of like, eh. That seems to be the common consensus I've heard so far is that they play through it, and then at the end they're sort of like, oh well, I don't really feel like playing it anymore. Like it didn't even seem like there was, like you know, they, like. Basically, like, with WoW, right? When you're in WoW, I see people who are like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna do this. Like, I'm gonna do this when I hit max level. People found, I think, with, like, with Wild Stars that a lot of people were just sort of like, I don't really know what I should be excited to do. You know what I mean? Like... Yeah, I think... Well, I'm not too sure. Like, like I said, I know a few people who play it, but a lot of them have been playing it pretty casually because we also need to have jobs and lives and stuff. So doing that RL stuff. Yeah, it's kind of lame. So like, I haven't really gotten too far into it, but it's definitely. I know I'm gonna try it out when I get a new computer because my computer will run it, but not well enough that I like it. Yeah. Well, exactly. My computer finally kind of stopped lagging, so. Yeah. So, but I'm definitely gonna try it out. It seems fun. It seems like the the dungeons are a lot harder, which I really like. The only thing I know that turned a lot of people off is that there's, they said that their end game is really just focusing on 40-man rating, and that's it. Which Yeah, I'm, which I'm is good really if you got the time for it and the people, but... Yeah, exactly. If you don't, you just sit there and do nothing. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of how I see it, is that I would... I, I, like, that's why I like WoW, right? Is that it has the content for for the hardcores, but it's also got stuff for the casual people to play, right? Right? Like, yeah. L LFR, case in point, right? Like, this is meant for people who don't, who can't raid on the regular. It's there for when it's convenient for them. I mean, the only downside and the only complaint I have with an LFR system is that really, if you're a DPS, you're screwed. Like, look at it. It took us, what? It was our average wait time for when we were in queue for the first one. It was like an hour. If you're a DPS, yeah. if you're a healer or a tank, it's like almost insecure. Like, so it almost like it almost discourages people from playing DPS specs. You know what I mean? But, yeah, or if you do, you go in queue and you go do something else. Like, yeah. Well, exactly. Um, Damn, switch. we actually killed this pretty quick, by the way. Yeah. Uh, speaking of video games, like since we're on the topic, Elder Scrolls Online. I I played the beta. And I got it, and I got the collector's edition and everything else, and I got, like, the the bonuses and everything. I played for my first month. I think I played it twice, and uh, I don't know. I just I couldn't really get into it. Like, I, I enjoyed it, but I didn't enjoy it as much as I thought I was going to. Like, I know when yeah, I, I thought that game was going to be freaking awesome. Like, I played... I know when I was looking at the... Um, when I played Final Fantasy XIV, I only... The, literally, the only reason I played it at first was because I was like, okay... Right now it's on sale on Steam for $15, regular 30 and you get a free month with it, right? So I was like, okay, I can try yeah. it for $15, and it's the game included, right? So what a normal monthly subscription for most games costs, I can get the game and try try it out, right? Yeah. So 
I was like, well, why wouldn't I do that, right? Like, that seems kind of like a no-brainer. So I tried it, and it actually was really good. I was really enjoying it, because I had, like, these cinematics, and I had cool class, like, well, not class story, but I had a cool story going with it. And then it was, like, around level, like, 18, 19, it was, like, the class quest was, like, go here, clear this dungeon. So I was like, okay, right? That's not bad. Like, you know, there's there's dungeon quests every once in a while, right? And, like, WoW and stuff. So I was like, it's not bad. And then it was, like, I handed that one, and it's like, go clear this dungeon. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, I was like, clear this. I'm like, okay, this is fucking ridiculous. Like, I'm like, I can't. I'm like, if it's just going to be go clear this dungeon for the rest of fucking time, like, I don't really want to do that. The one thing, though, to say to that game, though, I did love it. The fact that you had, like, you could be, say, for instance, like, I was, a, I was like an archer, right? Yeah. And I was, I was like level 19. I could equip, like, a spear, and I'd be like a lancer. And then it would be like level one. And I'd have to level that up separately. So you could, like, level multiple class. Like, you change classes based on like what your like what weapon you're holding basically okay so like you don't have to make a new character yeah like so would it be possible to have like a max level character that's just like amazing at everything not necessarily like you can really only do it so many times because of the fact that when you hand in quests like there's level 1 quests and like there's a bunch of small starting zones but there's really only so many right there's like a bunch of classes but there's only so many starting zones okay so yeah. like unless you want to sit there and like grind for days then yeah you can really you really have to kind of pick like one or two to kind of stick with but it was a really good game it had a really good system and everything else but um but back to elder scrolls online myself personally they they went with pay to play model which i understand right the they're they're Basically, their mentality and their thoughts were, you know what, we have to be pay to play to give the quality of content that people deserve from from the Elder Scrolls franchise, which I get. That makes sense to me, right? Yeah. But realistically, there's been never really any game, like huge MMO that's really, besides EVE and WoW, there's really been no game that's lasted pay to play for more than like a year and a bit. Like more yeah, than really. a year. Like every other game has like been about, about pay to play for about a year. And then has kind of de- like, you know, tampered off or like. Yeah, I'm trying know, to think because yeah, Rift would have been out a year. Star Wars is about a year. Yeah, so like there really hasn't been anything, and like looking at it, I'm like, okay, well, my thoughts originally were six months. After six months, it's gonna go free to play, but yeah. it's actually it's been almost what almost well, it's getting closer. I guess it's only been like what three or four. It's four months, so it's been another two months to my prediction, but. I don't know. I I mean, you know what? Maybe they'll prove us wrong. Like, maybe that is good. Because, like, I don't know. I Just because it's Elder Scrolls, I wanted to give it a chance. And I was really, really wanting to, to for it to work and be good. Because I was like, that'd be so fucking sweet, man. Yeah, but, that would be awesome. Like, and we've been saying forever that, like, man, if, like, Skyrim, when we were all playing that, we're like, man, if this was an MMO, it would be so awesome. You see, I was always, but you see, to me, as much as, like, I know I'm going to counter my own point here. As yeah. much as that we always said that, I was always the one that fought against it. Because I was always like, I don't know. Because, like, Elder Scrolls has done a fantastic job of creating the best and most immersive single-player RPG. Like, yeah. most detailed and everything. Like, they, they've mastered that. But, you see, like, myself, if you're going to do that, if you're going to go into something like that, like the business that they're in now, personally, myself, I wouldn't have done, I wouldn't have gone straight from amazing at single player to going right to MMO. I would have gone single player to then trying maybe like adding a co-op, like say Skyrim, but have a co-op I, option, right? Yeah, I think that would have been the best. And then they would have added like you can play with like up to two or three people and it would scale everything accordingly, right? Like I think they would have should have done that first and tested it to see how, you know, like are people actually enjoying this or like, you know what, like, is it, are we good at this? Are we bad at this? Like, I would have done that first. Because then, again, realistically, if that's the case, right? Like, say you bomb at it, and you're like, well, we're really shitty at making a multiplayer. People could still play it as a single-player game, right? Like, yeah. M- if you go MMO, you're going you're going all in. There's no real turning back from that. <laughs> yep. So, but, I don't know. We'll see how they do. I really, I re- to be honest, I really hope it succeeds. I just hope, my only thing is, I really hope that they actually still make like the single player Elder Scrolls games. Because I don't know, I kind of like I'm I love Skyrim. I was playing I went on a huge Skyrim stint the other day, like a little while ago. And it was like two months. That's like all I was playing. I was just playing Skyrim like day in, day out. I'm like, this game's fucking awesome. I was trying out like new mods and everything else and seeing like what was out there and just there's so many and like that's the thing I love about Skyrim and like the Elder Scrolls games is that they have such a great community. 
Like, they honestly do. They have, you know, like, the players... Like, even Morrowind. If you look at Morrowind, Morrowind came out when I was in grade... Like, I don't know, like, grade, like, 10? Maybe even earlier than that? And, like, I mean, that's, like... That's, like, over 10 years ago. <laughs> like, and there's still people making mods for it. Like, you know what I mean? Like Yeah, jeez, that's pretty crazy. Th there's still people updating their mods and, like, fucking creating new ones. Like, the community's still there for the people who love it. You know what I mean? Like... Yeah, that's awesome. So, and that's why I really hope they do continue the single-player route as well. But time will tell, right? Time will tell. Um, another thing I've been I've uh, been reading lately is Disney, with the Marvel franchise, has released a bunch of release dates. They said, "Hey, these are the re these are the days we are going to release movies in the next like I think it's like seven or so years, right? Yeah, these are going to be release dates. That. Yeah, so." There's been some fans, and I really hope that they do do this, but I know they probably won't because the budget for this would be just be fucking stupid. There have been, there's been a lot of people who have made fan fan made um, Marvel Civil War uh, posters, like movie posters. They made like fake ones, like their own like little ones. Yeah. It would be unreal if they did that storyline, but the budget they would have to have would be so high <laughs> because like. The Civil War involves, like, almost every superhero in the Marvel Universe, like, but, I mean, it is one of, it is, like, categorically one of the, I don't know, like, classic storylines. Oh, sweet, I got another crossbow that I don't need. God, I wish I got that crossbow. Yeah. Fuck, I, I got gloves crossbow. that I don't need. There you go. See? It's just, I, and I think this is the third time I've done this where I've gotten that crossbow, too, and, like, every time it's like, sweet, I don't need it still. Um... But, like, yeah, that'd be sweet if they did it, but I could see how that might be problematic for money and everything else. There's also talks that The Amazing Spider-Man, with uh, the ones with, like, the Andrew Garfield franchise now, I guess, there's talks that the third one is now being delayed production. And that scared a lot of people, because they're like, oh, shit. But the, th the fact is that some people are under the impression that maybe it's getting delayed because maybe Sony and Marvel have finally decided to work together and are going to include, like, basically everyone's thoughts and the theory was that the third Avengers movie would eventually come out and it would be co-funded by Sony and Marvel. And that Spider-Man would actually be in the Avengers. Which, I mean, he should be, but, you know, like, li their licensing right thing. Because Fox owns X-Men and I think something else. And yeah, the licensing on all those is like all fucked up. Because it's like X Men and one other thing is actually owned by Fox, and then the other one, and then Spider Man's owned by Sony. And I forget, there's a couple. There's like one or two other ones. Like Deadpool, Deadpool was actually owned by somebody else. That's why they weren't able to do it before. Um, but actually, I forget. I think the Punisher was owned by somebody else as well. And there's another one that was just recently, like, because actually Marvel just got the rights to the Punisher and something else back from whoever it was. But yeah, so that's kind of exciting. And uh, apparently I read the other day that uh, filming for the Fantastic Four, like they're making a new one, like a reboot, basically, because Chris Evans obviously can't be fucking Captain America and the Human Torch. So they did, they were redoing the Fantastic Four movie. And apparently that one just finished, like wrapped up filming the other day. So, that's so exciting. When, when did they say it'll be out? They didn't say. See, that's what was kind of weird. Is like they were like, "Yeah, filming finished," but they didn't really give any indication on if it's gonna be like out like soon or. So who knows? I mean, I'm hoping so because I mean, I, I've never been a huge Fantastic Four fan, but I am actually really excited that they're redoing it because they didn't really do, a, like I don't know. I liked the people that they cast as the Fantastic Four. I just didn't like, like, for instance, like, the f first Fantastic Four movie, it's like, they did this whole story, and they, like, focused on the story, focused on the story, and then it was like, they stretched it out for a huge amount of time, and then it's like, they had one quick fight scene, and then the movie was over. And I was like, that's... Like, I hate I, when movies do that, it's like my yeah. number one pet peeve. I'm like, I get that it's like, this, you know, it's the intro movie, but, like, come on, like, <laughs> you can do more than that, like, you know what I mean? And then the Silver Surfer one was kind of... I don't know, like, I didn't mind it. Everyone's like, it's so bad. I didn't mind it. I didn't think it was the greatest. But, I mean, you know, you can only do what you can do, right? I mean, everyone's going to fuck something up sooner or later, right? Yep. But, yeah. And uh, the new Hobbit trailer looks fucking amazing. I haven't watched it. I saw it. I was going to watch oh. it. I still haven't seen The Last Hobbit. I watched... What? 
it. Like an hour of it, and then I had to leave. And then oh. I, yeah, didn't finish watching it. I have a download and everything. I need to finish it. What the fuck, man? Um, actually, strangely enough, a guy I used to work with is actually an extra in The Hobbit. Oh, damn. And, yeah, and actually, someone posted it the other day. His name's Brett Wolf, and it's like, here's Brett Wolf, and they have like an arrow pointing to him in the scene, too. It's kind of fun. <laughs> Because we were joking around the first, when the first one came out, because he, he was an extra in that one as well. Okay. And, yeah. they're, and they're like, we should like Let, we should all go to like the movies and like play Let, who can spot Brett, right? Yeah. So, but yeah, because he he goes to New Zealand every like once in a while or whatever, and they were hiring for extras because he like he loves it down there, right? So he's like, yeah, sure, why the fuck not, right? Like, why wouldn't I try? And yeah, yeah they contacted him, and yeah, he was an extra in the movie. It was pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Pretty, pretty neat actually what do you actually do like is he just like a uh, I, I, don't know, I don't know I don't know because he's like the one I this picture I saw it's in the new one and like he's just standing like there's like a whole row of like soldiers and he's just like standing in the front he said he was in a scene with Gandalf so that's like the only information he gave us so I go okay he's probably get, not allowed to tell too much about the movie either well I mean really too though right like when you're shooting it you could be like oh I'm in the scene with Gandalf like they, they probably don't even really much know exactly what's going on right yeah there. really or they're if like, that will even be in the movie. Yeah, exactly. So, but yeah, it's kind of kind of a neat thing, you know. It's like, oh, I know someone kind of famous. So it's <laughs> kind of, kind of <laughs> yeah, neat. I wouldn't call that famous, but yeah. Hey, man, whatever. He he was on set with Ian McKellen. Sorry, Sir Ian McKellen. There you go. Oh, oh who? Yeah. Damn. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I don't know. That's all I really got for nerd news. You got anything else, Brent? Any video game stuff or uh... anything else? I don't think so. All right, I guess well, League, League of Legends World Championships coming up someone soon. That's woo, about it. That's exciting. League of Legends in Korea. Crazy. Did you hear about last year? Do you even follow League at all? No, I really don't. But Freaking, They sold out the Staples Center for the World Championships. That's fucking crazy, man. Yeah. You know what, though? Like, that's the thing. is like People underestimate the money that's in eSports now. Like, oh, it's ridiculous. Like, yeah, I mean, fucking, what, Korea has that fucking... Starcraft University, <laughs> and then yeah. and like I don't know. There's a lot of people who pay money for that shit, and I mean, it's a competitive sport. I mean, if you see the people who do it, like I think to quote to to reference some like a a series that's done it pretty well, to what I would like to see almost in maybe not to the extent of this, but have you ever seen Video Game High School, Brent? I've heard of it, never actually seen it though. Yeah, like they have. It's like it's basically a war. It's like constructed like a world where. Video games are treated like, you know, basically like pro football in the States, like college football, like where okay, yeah. people people get accepted and like they have teams that rival each other and like go into these crazy championships and they train. And like, I mean, realistically, that's not really that far fetched for some of these people. I mean, no, it's if, already getting like that. I mean, yeah, if you look at Starcraft, especially like there's oh, people yeah. who study videos for fucking weeks trying to get strategies down and everything else like. It's crazy. Like I know some people in like the states and stuff that that like you know try their hardest to be as good as like some of the people in Korea where they are you know that's what they're doing. Like they're they're making yeah, the strategy. Sort of they essentially make the groundbreaking strategies that become common place. And like I know there's people who are trying their hardest to be the trendsetter as opposed to just following. You know, and it's, it's not there easy. is in StarCraft. There's a, it's getting a lot more not just Korean focused. Yeah. Well. Yeah. But. It's the same thing with League of Legends, though. The Koreans dominate it because it's like, it's like a thing there. Yeah, you can that's... be a, a professional video game player essentially. Whereas here, if you have, if I was like, yeah, I play League of Legends for a living, they'd be like, the fuck, like. Yeah. Oh, so, oh, so you're unemployed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know what? It's crazy, but you know what? Some people like. I think my friend actually, my friend was in who's in college. She's a teacher now. She actually did. Um, uh, one of her reports was how playing World of game a game like World of Warcraft is actually a good thing for learning, because the the theory behind it was is that playing a game like WoW, you you learn time management, you learn like structure, like you get structure because you're, you know you're try and you learn organizational skills by running raids and stuff like that. Yeah, and so. um, but yeah, and the, the strategy and problem solving aspects of it, and again, like trying to do like your your raids, your dailies, everything else, you learn the time management skills through that. So it's actually they say it's actually beneficial for kids to almost do stuff like that. Like obviously, it's within reason and has to be regulated because obviously, if you just leave kids to their own devices, they're gonna play like I do sometimes, and like 
I remember back in the day, like before, you know, before my son, like there was days, remember where I'm like, I just looked at the clock and I realized I've been playing for like 12 hours. <laughs> yeah. I and it's remember, like, yeah. And it's like, and then you like sit there and like end up getting lazy and you're like, ah, I don't feel like cooking. I'm just going to order food. And then it's just a slippery slope. <laughs> like, but like by no means, like I'll tell you right now, I'll be the first one to tell you my son is not going to play video games like I do. Like I will not allow it. Cause like, yeah, not to the extent. Yeah. Like I, I think video games are a great thing. Like, I mean, they're a nice escape for myself. I mean, I love it just for, I mean, for one, I love the culture of it because you know, I love things that are nerd. I mean, the biggest pull to WoW, and I think the reason I ever, I've ever been so addicted is that when it's like I always used to play video games, you know, at home by myself, and eventually, you know, I would tire myself. I'd be like, I can't play this anymore. I'm gonna go yeah. do something else, or you know, where it's like I played WoW, and I'm like, wow, this is literally a game full of people who are just like me. Like, why, you know, the appeal of that in itself, it's like, you know. Wow, I think that's like, what pulls in like tons of people. Yeah, because like I mean, you know, you may not find someone who's exactly like you, but I mean, you find a guild, and there'll be a, the occasional person you'll disagree with, but you're like, man, this guy's fucking funny. Like, why couldn't? And I mean, I think a lot of people, I know myself included, I find myself asking, it's like, man, why couldn't I find people that are like this, like where I live? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And I mean, it's a huge draw for people because I mean, again, like look at us. We've been playing for what nine years together, I think now. Something like that. I mean, you man, you're a better like you're uh, you're one of my best friends. I mean, I've never met you in person, but I mean, you know, it's so like, crazy too to think about. Yeah, like it's it's crazy. I mean, with the way the how connected the world is nowadays, it's stupid to to really not entertain the idea that you could you could form such a relation like you know friendship or relationship with someone yeah. via the like, internet. I'm at my girlfriend's really. Yeah, well, exactly. Like, I mean, it's not everyone thinks. I mean, it's one of those things, right? Like, I mean. People said what? Like people said what's called online dating was weird, and they're like, "Oh, that's so desperate." But man, look how many fucking people do that. I mean, Match.com and like fucking all these other things. They're, I mean, they they have success stories of people who met there and have been happily married for years. Oh, for I sure. mean, until until pe more people realize that that's just becoming more normal. I mean, it's gonna be weird, right? I mean, people say, "Oh, how could you meet someone in a video game?" I mean, fuck. We when we played on Blade Fist, there was what Zeo woman and that other guy. They fucking, he was from Brooklyn, she was from England, and, like, now they're, like, married with, like, two kids. <laughs> That's so crazy. Yeah, like, I mean, man, it happens. Like, there's people who move across the states and, like, you know, change countries, change whatever. I mean, man, if you find someone, you just know it, right? It doesn't matter where you meet them. Yep. But, yeah, anyways. I think, like you say, that's definitely going to become more accepted, too. Oh, yeah, I mean, it will. Like, I mean, in general, I mean, look at touchscreen technology. People are, People fear change, right? I mean... Touchscreen technology probably seemed pretty freaky to some people at one point, like, you know, before. Like, oh, it's so space age and weird, like, and all this other shit. I mean, it comes more common when, like, once people integrate it properly, right? I mean, fuck, there's talks of people, I mean, I don't personally agree with this necessarily, but there is, like, any, has any babies born in, like, certain hospitals after a certain date, they were actually going to inject, like, microchips in them so they could track them to, like, make sure, that, like, they didn't leave the hospital. Yeah. That freaks a lot of people out, because, I mean, they're like, I don't, you know, that's fucking weird. Like, you know, yeah, it's being done. a little bit weird, I'm not like, going Like, it's kind of mandatory. But, I mean, essentially, I mean, the world is moving forward. And, I mean, medical science is usually the cutting-edge field of that, because everyone's constantly trying to integrate technology with the human body, right? I mean, yeah. if someone found out how to basically make your smartphone completely accessible by your mind, and you could just not have you have your phone in your pocket or not even have it on you and we're just able to basically pop up a window and like text somebody just by thinking it's man man it'd be a billion dollar market yep and i mean it's already like it'll happen in our lifetime where you oh just... yeah for sure well i mean they did the first cyborg operation this year where the actual they were supposed to do it where it actually it was a it was an arm like the lower part of the arm like the forearm and it was supposed to basically be all of the like movements were completely powered and controlled by the firing of like neurons and everything else. Like it was all completely controlled by the human mind. It was actually the the robotic arm integrated with a human body. Yeah, that's and, I so mean, crazy. I mean, it's it's nuts, man. I mean, look at before that they were doing. I know in I think it was Japan, they were doing. They had the robotic legs thing, and it literally what it was was these things. It was like a framework that went around the entire leg. And essentially all it did was it put, it was like electroshocks that basically stimulated the muscles to tense up. 
right? So it didn't need the brain to fire, but it was allowing people who couldn't walk to be able to walk. And I mean, it's crazy that, you know, people think these things are weird, but I mean, it's how medical science progresses, right? You poke it's and prod. So that they can do that, though. Oh, it's fucking amazing. I mean, it's, it's absolutely unbelievable and such a great thing for humanity in general. Because, I mean, sometimes, you know, the loss, the, the non-use of limbs is not necessarily your fault, right? I mean, just imagine, like, you know, you're born, say you're born, you're like, okay, well, you know, your legs, your legs just don't work, you're not going to be able to walk. That being taken away for something that's not even your fault, and, you know, like, now it's just like, oh, you can't walk? That's not a problem. <laughs> you know, you'll experience walking in your lifetime. Like, that's fucking amazing. Yeah, that's crazy. Or, like, blindness and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's just fucking phenomenal. It's great for humanity, I mean. But, yeah. Um, that's all I got. <laughs> that was quite the tangent we just went <laughs> Yeah, we just, we're like, yeah, we're all done our nerd news about superheroes, and then we're like, medical science and humanity. Yeah. <laughs> and like, just got really deep at the I end I think that proves that we are huge nerds. Yeah. Hey, man, there's nothing nerdy about science. That's the way of the future, yeah, bro. Whatever. Yeah. But anyways, uh, that's all we got. This is our first edition of Nerd News. Let us know what you think. Make sure you guys subscribe and uh, stay tuned for our other videos, and uh, we'll see you guys later. Peace.